was of urgent public importance in accordance with Order 93-1 of the Standing Orders of Parliament. The statement drew rigorous debate instead of comments on the floor of Parliament, and this reverberated to the public in a heated national discourse. The Honorable Minority Leader, as part of his statement, called on the Speaker to follow President and declare vacant the seats of four members of Parliament pursuant to Articles 97, 1G, and H of the Constitution. The Honorable Minority Leader informed the House that he had come to the notice of the Minority Caucus that certain members of Parliament had taken actions that contravene the provisions of Article 971 g and 971 h of the Constitution. Specifically, the Honorable Minority Leader alleged that A, Honorable Peter Yao Kwache Aka, Member of Parliament for Amenfi Central, who was elected on the ticket of the National Democratic Congress, NDC, had filed with the Electoral Commission to contest the upcoming 2024 parliamentary elections as an independent candidate. B, Honorable Andrews Asiyama Amwako, independent member of parliament for Formina, and currently serving as the second deputy speaker, had filed to contest the 2024 parliamentary elections on the ticket of the new patriotic party, NPP. C, Honorable Kwajo Asante, member of parliament for Suhum, who was elected on the ticket of the NPP, had filed with the Electoral Commission to contest the upcoming 2024 parliamentary elections as an independent candidate. And D, Honorable Cynthia Maimile Morrison, member of parliament for Aguna West, who was elected on the ticket of the MPP, had filed with the Electoral Commission to contest the upcoming 2024 parliamentary elections as an independent candidate. In the light of these developments, the Honorable Minority Leader invited the Speaker to declare the seats of these four members vacant in accordance with Article 971G and 971H of the Constitution 1992. According to his submission, if these seats are declared vacant, the resultant effect on the composition of this House would be that the NDC would have 136 seats, while the MPP would have 135 seats, thus making the NDC the majority party in Parliament. This statement sparked intense debate in the House, with members raising questions of constitutional interpretation and the role of the Speaker in the enforcement of Article 97 of the Constitution, particularly in the matter of the vacation of seats by members of Parliament. It is therefore incumbent upon me, as Speaker of this House, to address these issues thoroughly. In doing so, I am simply applying the provisions of the Constitution 1992, Parliamentary Act 1965, Act 300, the Standing Orders of Parliament 2024, Presidents, and established legal principles. The issue of interpretation and enforcement of the Constitution lies in the bosom of the Supreme Court and not that of the Speaker. And so I proceed to tell you my understanding of Article 97. Honorable members, at the core of the Matro Leader's statement are the provisions of Article 97.1 of the Constitution of Ghana, 1992, which govern the circumstances under which a member of parliament shall vacate his 
or her seat in Parliament. The relevant surpluses of the provision read as follows. Article 91 states, a member of Parliament shall vacate his seat in Parliament. G, if he leaves the party of which he was a member at the time of his election to Parliament to join another party or seeks to remain in Parliament as an independent member. Or H, if he was elected a member of Parliament as an independent candidate and joins a political party, unquote. Honorable members, my humble view is that Article 97, 1G and H operate to prevent what the old school refers to as cross carpeting or carpet crossing as witnessed in the early legislative councils and parliaments of the Gold Coast and the Republic of Ghana, respectively. Cross carpeting is now part of what is referred to as defection or party switching when a member of parliament who was elected on the, part, on the ticket of one political party leaves that party to join another, or when an independent member of parliament joins a political party after being elected as an independent member, or a party member acts similarly. The concept of defection raises significant concerns about the integrity of political representation. When voters elect a candidate, they do so based not only on the individual's personal qualities, but also on the political party platform they represent. Party switching or defection, therefore, can be seen as a breach of the mandate and social contract between the member of parliament and the electorate as it changes the political dynamics that the voters originally endorsed. The prohibition of defection as reflected in Article 97, 1G and H serves several critical purposes in maintaining the integrity of parliament, parliamentarians, and protecting the trust and will of the people. The provisions of Article 97, 1G and H are designed to safeguard the principles of party loyalty, voter representation, and political stability. The faction is prohibited because it undermines the trust placed in members of parliament by their constituents and can lead to instability in Parliament. These constitutional safeguards ensure that members of Parliament remain accountable to both their parties and the electorate, and they prevent members of Parliament from engaging in behavior that could amount to fraud or disruptive of the functioning of Parliament. Honorable members, it has been suggested by some members that the provisions of Article 97, 1G and H, which address the vacation of a member of parliament seat due to defection, should be understood prospectively. That is, they should apply only to future parliaments and not to the term of office of parliament when the act occurs. While this argument may appear to offer a practical approach it must be firmly dismissed as both untenable and inconsistent with the constitutional purpose of these provisions. One may ask, what is Article 97 purposed to do? The clear intent of Article 97, 1G and H, to my understanding, is to preserve party loyalty, engender trust, and protect the mandate of the voter and representation throughout the MP's term of office. These provisions are designed to prevent political instability, as I stated, 
opportunistic behavior, fraudulent representations, and disruption of parliamentary composition during the term of a parliament by ensuring that members of parliament remain faithful to the mandate given to them by the electorate at the time of their election. To understand these provisions as only applying prospectively, meaning that they would take effect only in future parliaments, will nullify the purpose of Article 97. The provisions of Article 97 and the consideration are intended to address breaches of party loyalty and independent status as they occur during a term, ensuring that the House's composition remains consistent with the electoral outcomes. If Article 97 1G and H were to apply only in future parliaments, it will render these provisions effectively superfluous. By the time the next parliament is constituted, any member of parliament who has defected or sued political allegiance during the current parliament will no longer be in violation of the provision. They will start the next term aligned with their new party or as an independent. There will exist no defection and the violation will effectively be wiped clean at the start of the term of the succeeding parliament. If the understanding of the provisions was futuristic, members of parliament could freely switch parties or become independent during the term of a parliament and pretend to be representing the interests of the people who elected him or her or the party on whose platform he or she wrote to parliament while paying loyalty to a different party or group of people with no immediate consequences. This is precisely what Article 97 1G and H are meant to prevent. The provisions exist to curb, as I stated, defection, as it happens, not to offer a free pass to members of parliament to change allegiance during their term and only face no consequences, even in future electoral cycles. Under Article 97 of the Constitution of Ghana, there are indeed different modes through which a member of parliament shall vacate his or her seat. And these can be broadly categorized into two groups. The A is the one that we refer to as automatic or procedural. And the B is a matter of determination of fact. Certain modes of vacating a seat happen automatically or procedurally, either through the direct operation of law or institutional processes. These are relatively straightforward and do not require external determination of facts. For example, the dissolution of parliament, the election as speaker, the expulsion for contempt, and resignation of a member of parliament. The second category deals with others where you require determination of facts. And those are the other provisions identified in Articles 97.1, C, E, and D. These involve more complex factual situations that are less clear cut and may be subject to dispute, making them matters that likely require determination to ascertain whether a vacancy has occurred. Honorable members, it is important to note that the determination of whether a member of parliament has resigned from their political party or has joined another party is a matter of fact. In 2020, during the tenure of Right Honorable Professor Aaron Michael Kui as Speaker of Parliament, a notable instance occurred when the new patriotic party notified the Speaker that the Member of Parliament for Formula, Honorable Andrews Asiema Amwako, was no longer a member of the party. The MPP requested that the seat be declared vacant in accordance with Article 97.1 of the Constitution, citing 
that the Member of Parliament had filed to contest the upcoming elections as an independent candidate, which violated the party's constitution. In response to this request and notification, Right Honorable Professor Aaron Michael Quay proceeded to declare the seat vacant. However, I must emphasize that this ruling made by the previous speaker does not bind other speakers, including myself. It is important to point out that in the present matter before the House, the notice of poll is available at the Electoral Commission on all the 275 constituencies. I have duly taken note of the notice of the poll, and further, more, no member in making comments to the statement made to the House by the minority leader denies these glaring and notorious facts. And so, what is my role in all this? Honorable members, it is important to point out that the Speaker is called upon by the standing orders of Parliament, particularly Order 18, to inform the House of the occurrence of a vacancy of the seat of a member under Clause 1B to E, G, and H of Article 97 of the Constitution. Accordingly, I proceed to inform the House that by the notification of the polls, the following members of Parliament have by their actions vacated their seats in Parliament. The members are Honorable Peter Yao Kwashi Aka, NDC MP for Amenfi Central in the Western Region, now referred to as an independent parliamentary candidate for the same constituency. Two, Honorable Andrew Amwako Asiyama, independent member for former constituency in Ashanti Region, now referred to as MPP parliamentary candidate for the constituency. Three, Honorable Kojo Asante, MPP MP for Suhum in the Eastern Region, now referred to as independent candidate for the same constituency. And finally, Honorable Cynthia Mamile Morrison, MPP MP for Aguna West constituency in the Central Region, now referred to as independent candidate for the same constituency. These MPs cannot be allowed by law and my good self to continue to pretend to be representing people that they don't believe in and they don't have any loyalty for in this house any longer. The house is accordingly so informed. Honorable members, I thank you for your patience and attention. Honorable members, please. Honorable members, may we Honorable members, my response to what happened two days ago, and I don't think this is subject to debate. It's a communication to the House, and by our standing orders, 
is information I have to give you, and I've done so according to my understanding of the law. Please, uh, Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, with respect, I thank you for the opportunity to make comments on the communication you have just delivered to the House. May you kindly refer to the standing orders that you are coming under. Mr. Speaker, I do not come under any standing orders. So you if may resume your seat then. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, you are, you are the father of this house. And Mr. Speaker, you, you, have, you have communicated to the house a position you've taken. It's been our practice that any time you have come out with a formal communication, you give opportunity to leadership to make a response. Mr. Speaker, if today you do not want me to talk, Mr. Speaker, that should be it. But Mr. Speaker, if you say that... Honourable Honor, Honor member, Honorable member, you got it wrong. It's not the practice of the House that any time I come with a formal communication, I allow members to make comments. That's not the practice of the House. It's never been the practice no, 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 of any no, no, no. of the houses that I have been member from 1993 to date. I have not had that as any practice of the House. Some speakers, including myself, may entertain some comments from members, but it is not a practice of the House. Mr. Speaker, if it pleases you, I would like to make some few comments on the matters you've raised. Because, Mr. Speaker, these are very grave matters. The matters you've raised are not light matters. They are very grave matters that I would want to comment. And, Mr. Speaker, So please, you want to seek my leave to make comments? That is so, respectfully. Now you agree it's not the practice. Mr. But Speaker, you are seeking my leave. Mr. Speaker, as it pleases you, with your leave. With your leave. Well, yes, you may do so. Mr. Speaker, thank you once again for the leave granted me to comment on your communication you just delivered. Mr. Speaker, you underscored your submissions with a very important point, that the matter that came before us has interpretation, interpretation <coughs> reliefs, and that you do not have the power to interpret the Constitution, and that your duty is to enforce. Mr. Speaker. Honorable member, you are not listening to me. Mr. Speaker, may I finish with respect? All what you said are wrong, so Mr. I Speaker, cannot continue to allow Mr. you Speaker, to keep on misleading Speaker, the House. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, please, if, if, if you think that this is your house and you didn't want us to talk, so be, Mr. Speaker, we should have Honorable you to Majority Leader, you are addressing the Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, you may, I need your protection. They must stop what they are doing. I am in charge. Mr. Speaker, then Anytime. they may be quiet. Please, please. Mr. Speaker, with respect, in your, in your, in your ruling, my understanding was to the effect that your duty is not to interpret the Constitution. My understanding was to the effect that your duty is not to interpret the Constitution. But Mr. Speaker, it is important for me to emphasize one more time that when the statement was made by my respected colleague, Dr. Kaisel Atufosel, I did draw the attention of the House, including your good self, to the effect that the matter being a very grave matter, I have taken it upon myself to seek 
the court's interpretation of the matter. Mr. Speaker, indeed. Mr. Speaker, I, I think I, I think I think Honourable I deserve members, some respect. Please, Mr. Speaker, let's listen I think to I deserve some respect. Let's listen to each other. No, please. no, I, I think I think it is only fair. Honourable Majority Leader, please address me. I'm taking care of that. Please, Mr. let's Speaker, listen to each other. I did indicate that I have filed a process at the Supreme Court. And indeed, Mr. Speaker, the belief of the court had attempted to serve the process on the Director of Legal Affairs and the Director of Legal Affairs and the entire Legal Directorate refused service because, according to them, there was a circular stating that they can only be served on Mondays. I saw the circular myself. Subsequent to that, I asked hearing the intention of Mr. Speaker to come to a determination in one way or the other, the directed service, which is within my right, my, my, Mr. Speaker, yesterday, yesterday, Parliament was duly said. Honorable member, please, I didn't want to interrupt you, but you are the the majority leader and the leader of this house. As at the time you were directing service yourself, you took the trouble of coming to parliament with two persons who alleged to be bailiffs and went to the legal office and went to the legal office to yourself, directing officials of the legal office to receive the service. You are a member of parliament. I am the speaker. It is my duty to protect your privileges and immunities. In, the, in doing so, I had a discussion with the Chief Justice, and we came to an understanding that in the meantime, the Chief Justice will issue a directive as to how service of members of parliament, some officers of parliament, and the speaker could be effected. I communicated this to the House and discussed it with you, the leaders. We said that as we go along, we will together, parliament and the judiciary, particularly led by the Supreme Court, come out with a legislation on this issue of privileges and immunities of parliament, members of parliament, and specified officials of parliament. We discussed this. Based on this discussion, the Chief Justice issued a directive to all registries of courts in the country. And it is stated clearly there that the speaker can be saved on Mondays during working hours. There were reasons why we came to those agreements. You are aware of it, yet you kept on insisting that service be effected whilst the speaker was presiding over the proceedings of the House. You as leader of the House, as majority leader. You are saying that this was service because you threw the court processes on the table and walked away? Is that how you effect service? Please, Mr. to quote the common parlance, don't go there. Uh, with respect, for the past 12 years, I have accorded you every respect, and I'll continue to do that no matter Mr. Speaker, the facts you put out are not true. Mr. Speaker, these are credibility issues, so I will respond honorable, for the record. Honorable, honorable. Mr. Speaker, somebody has told you something. Mr. Speaker, you reserve the right to be there to make your point. Let me make my point too. Mr. Speaker, no way. Mr. Speaker, no way. I will... Mr. Speaker, whoever told you, Mr. Speaker, whoever told you that I threw a paper at somebody 
This has to do with my credibility. I will not allow her. You know, honorable member, you don't listen at all. Mr. Speaker, I do. I never said Mr. you. Speaker, you said I Alex. never said you threw a paper at anybody. Mr. Speaker. I Mr. Never Speaker, said that. that's exactly what you said. Let the anger check it. You Mr. See, Speaker, that is what you said. You are being carried away by your Mr. anger. Speaker, you are not I'm listening. Not Mr. Speaker, I'm not angry. Honorable all. member. Honorable member. Mr. Speaker, I'm not angry. I said the court process yes. was thrown on the table in the office. I never stated it was thrown by you at any person. Mr. Speaker, you said it, I allegedly said some, some bailiffs. No, 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 no. Mr. Speaker, then clarify. Mr. Please. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, with listen respect, to me. Me. Mr. Speaker, listen to me. Honorable Majority Leader, I don't want to proceed to make some orders. Please, resume your seat. I'm very serious about that. Mr. Speaker, Mr. please resume your seat. Honorable member, honorable member, your, your, your. Coming events cast their shadows. We have Parliament now, elect with the executive. conspiracy between the speaker and the minority to bring confusion in the house. It is clear that Mr. Speaker avoided service of the writ to do the bidding of the NDC. It's so clear, but we believe in the law. We, as the majority caucus, immediately, immediately are boycotting parliament until this matter is determined by the Supreme Court. The, 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 the speaker has no right to interpret the constitution and it is so clear that what he did was to give advantage to the NDC and do the bidding of the NDC. We are not going to go further to litigate. We have a process at the court. We will fo follow it up. If the court makes a pronouncement, we will respect the orders of the court. But because we believe that the issues we have raised are issues for interpretation. Thank you very much. Indeed. Thank you very much. working majority. But now, we have the working majority. Yeah. Right, Honorable Speaker, beginning the next parliamentary sitting, we'll begin the process to take over as the majority caucus of this parliament. Yeah. And we thank you for the opportunity. Mr. Speaker, we have taken note, we have taken note of the fact that our colleagues, the minority caucus, the new minority caucus have just worked out. But that will not stop us from doing what is right for the people of Ghana. We will do what is right. But their conduct exactly reflects the work of a minority of the speaker. We thank you very much for this ruling. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable members. Um, yes, uh, Chief Whip. Mr. Speaker, unless gent till, till Tuesday, uh, next week, Mr. Speaker, I so move. Honorable.
correction of uh, votes and proceedings and official reports. We need to take that. Honorable members, item five on the order paper, correction of votes and proceedings and official report. We will start with the correction of votes and proceedings of Wednesday, 16th, page two. Page three. Page five. Page seven. The NDC minority has just moved. have just moved from minority to majority. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In fact, the people of Ghana voted for the NDC majority, but if not certain machinations, this should have happened from day one of this parliament. But you see, finally we are here. We are here to do the business of the people of Ghana. We are here to begin the process to reset our country. Our country has gone through very difficult times. In fact, oftentimes, they have blamed, the people of Ghana have blamed Parliament for not standing up for the people of Ghana. But obviously, you can't blame the NDC minority because we were not having the working majority. Today, we have the working majority. And we'll begin the process to reset our country. We want to use this opportunity to assure the people of Ghana that the NDC majority will stand for the people of Ghana the any day, right. any time. Right. We will begin the process to move to the majority side and elect a new second deputy speaker on Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. We are sure the people of Ghana that we will also take over majority of the committees of parliament. Yes. And we will yes. do the work in a way that will benefit the people of Ghana. Yes. Yes. We have gone through so much, so much as a country, and this cannot continue. We thank the speaker for standing with the people of Ghana, respecting the constitution of the Republic of Ghana, respecting precedent and the standing order of the people of Ghana, of, of the parliament of Ghana. In all, all of this, we thank the people of Ghana by stand, for, 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 for standing with the, with the people of Ghana. Thank you very much. Thank you. End of the eighth parliament to matter and to count. There are so many matters, as you know, matters that we have been raising, that we have our say, we win the debate, but we do not have our way. We do not carry the day because we didn't have the numbers. We are determined to make sure that these numbers count and that all of those obnoxious draconian policies, um, I mean, for example, the uh, inaction in, in terms of the Galamse fight, all of these uh, very, you know, inimical taxes that have imposed hardships on our people, we are going to start work in earnest to make sure that our numbers count. So in the next few days, uh, history is going to be made. Yes. This is going to be a defining, consequential moment. And we are determined that this defining and consequential moment ultimately should matter to the Ghanaian. 
it should reflect in bringing reprieve, in bringing some hope to the Ghanaian who has been suffering under this intransigent, very, very stiff, naked government that yes. refuses to listen, That's that it. will not even be a party that will build consensus and that will bring on board divergent views. So this is a golden opportunity and we intend to make this golden opportunity count right from day one. Your colleagues on the other side say they are headed for... Go to the Supreme Court when Professor Okwe delivered the same verdict. Speaker Bagbin has only followed a precedent set by this house. And you know, you are experienced followers of parliament. You know that parliament is run by three main pillars. The constitution, the standing orders, and then our conventions. That is what drives parliament, what undergirds the work of parliament. And so the hypocrisy and the double standards, when they were doing the same to Honorable Esiama four years ago, why didn't they go to the Supreme Court? So they should spare us that. We have work to do. The Ghanaian people are looking up to the new majority to rescue them and to reset Ghana. And that's exactly what we are going to do. Evening to your cherished viewers. As a matter of fact, this is not the first time such a case has taken place in Ghana's parliament. This is about the fourth or the fifth time that it has happened. It happened in the was it in the fourth in the second parliament or fourth parliament that between 1997 to 2000 it happened in the case of Mr. Abraham no it happened in the third parliament and that was when President Kufo became the president of this country and that was in the case of the same Amemfi Centra that was Honorable Abraham Kufi Asante. I'm surprised that that was Kofi Asante, but today is Kojo Asante. <laughs> so tomorrow, I don't know whether it is going to be you. <laughs> but clearly, if you look at the presidency that happened, and the ruling that have come, and the ruling that the Speaker of Parliament has brought, the Speaker had no other option. In the case of Abraham Kofi Asante, the then MP4, Asangragwa, when he crossed carpet, he left the NDC ticket based upon which he came to parliament and joined the MPP on the floor of parliament. The honorable speaker of Par minority leader at that time was honorable mm -hmm. Alban Bagwin. He also raised the attention of the then speaker of parliament mm -hmm. that once Kofi Asante has left the NDC and has joined the MPP, he had no business being in the chamber. And therefore, based on that, Kofi Asante was sacked from parliament and there was by election in Amenfi Central. That was the first case. The second case that happened was in the case of Honorable Wayuseni, Professor Wayuseni, the then MP for Tamale Central. He came on the ticket of the NDC. On the floor of parliament, he crossed carpet from the NDC and said he was no more going to be a member of the NDC. And therefore, he had seen the light. And therefore, he was coming to become a member of the MPP. Therefore, he crossed from the MPP NDC side and joined the MPP side. The then minority leader was Honorable Aban Bagwin. He also raised attention of the chair that based on Article 97, 1G1H, Wayusini did not qualify to be in the chamber, and therefore they walked him out and went for a by-election in Tamale Central, Tamale North, and Tamale Central. And that's how Honorable Inu Safusini became an MP for Tamale North. The third one that was going to be ha take place was the case of Honorable Joseph Osewusu. He came to parliament in 2008 as independent member for Bekwai. And therefore, when he wanted to cross from MP independent to join the MPP, the MPP then came to their senses. And therefore, when they went for primaries, two years to elections, they deferred the primaries for Bekwai. They knew that six months to election, there can be no by election. And therefore, they deferred the primaries for Bekwai so that there will be delayed primaries in Bekwai. So that any time Joe Osewusu defected to, from independence to MPP, there could be no by election in Bekwai. And therefore, if you check, Bekwai people didn't do primaries 
when MPP did their primaries two years to the general elections in 2012. And that's how Joseph Osewusu metamorphosed from independent MP for Bekwai and became MPP MP for Bekwai. Then the third one that was supposed to happen was the independent member for Formina. And that's where the law has called them. In the case of Joseph Osewusu, the then speaker glossed over it and nobody raised it. Even though the MPP were playing with time, they marked time to make sure that always when the party is going for primaries, they don't open primaries, nomination for primaries, in constituencies occupied by independent members, waiting to join the political parties because they know the consequences of that action. In the case of Formina, the MPP went for primaries in January, February 2024. But the primaries for Formina, because they know the consequences that were going to befall the independent member for Formina, and the parliament is a hung parliament, they deferred the primaries for Formina. And the chairman went to me for Ashanti region, who was against the MPP, MP, uh, independent member for Formina, was prevailed upon, they all prevailed upon, so that now we have three months to elections. And they know that three months to election, the constitution is against by election. There can be no by election in, in Formina, and that's why they have opened the nominations. So clearly, both NDC and MPP are aware of the consequences of defecting or shifting your loyalty from the ticket which brought you to parliament to another system. So we all know, and that is why any political party, whenever they want to organize primaries in such constituencies, they wait to be able to cure the constitutional mandate which by election can take place. And if you listen to, I wouldn't want to quote this one, but I'm forced to quote it. If you listen to the Supreme Court ruling about the case of Asin North, the ruling the Supreme Court gave, they didn't say future intent of Asin North. As far back as November, 19th November, two clear weeks to the 2020 by 2017 by election 2017 general elections the member for Asin North was not a Canadian citizen he had received his certificate to renounce his citizenship but the supreme court ruled that the commencement of the act was on the day of filing nominations at the electoral commission do you remember and based upon that as at the time the supreme court after the time J.J. Kwesin was filing his nomination at the Supreme Court, he, once he did not receive his Canadian citizenship, he was still a member of a citizen in Canada. That was the Supreme Court ruling. So when you are talking, the Supreme Court, even though J.J. Kwesin's action was, he became a member of parliament for Asin North on December 7th, 2016. But as far back as October, he was still a Canadian citizenship because he did not receive that thing. So when they are tracing your activities, it's on the day you file with the Electoral Commission. That's what the Supreme Court says. So if you check what the speaker said, he said the notice of pool by the Electoral Commission is out. And the pictures of those four MPs are there. They have changed their status. And based on that, there is automatic cessation. If you listen to the Constitution very well, it's a member of parliament shall vacate his seat if he leaves the party based upon which he came to parliament at the turn of his election into that parliament. So at the turn of Kojo Asante's election to parliament of Ghana, he was MPP member. And therefore he must repay, remain MPP member until 6 January 2025. At the time appear as and Asiyama, MPP, an independent member for Formina, was filing his nomination to come to parliament in 2021. He came as an independent member for Formina, and therefore within the four-year mandate, his status must not change. Have their status changed or not? It has changed. And the speaker says that that article was put into the constitution to be able to protect the loyalty of the members of parliament to their constituent. So if you have come and you have changed your loyalty, should they still remain, allow you to be there? So clearly, we don't need to believe about this. And I don't think even a professor, Professor Wayosenu got it wrong. And you don't need a professor to tell you this. It's as clear as that.
So I don't think the speaker got it wrong. The political parties, if not politics that they are doing, are aware of the consequences. And that is why they always defer primaries in those consequences that they are massaging. If not, why is it that in January they didn't open nominations in Formula? Why is it that in 20, 2012 MPP didn't open nomination in 2010 at Bekwai? They always wait to beat the constitutional six months constitutional period where there can be no by election. Can you imagine if this had happened in January and we went for by election in Formula? Can you imagine what would happen? This is what they were dodging. Why were they dodging it? So we must not take it as if it is the speaker who has given the ruling. Then they are saying, oh, there must be Supreme Court. Speaker is interpreting the Constitution. He must allow the Supreme Court to rule. My brother, was it the Supreme Court that ruled against Abraham Kofi Asante? Was it the Supreme Court that ruled upon Inu Safuseni? Was it the Supreme Court that ruled upon Andi Asiyama? They say Andi Asiyama, MP for Formina. My brother, if it is not broken, don't fix it. You go to Supreme Court for interpretation. But as long as Parliament is concerned, the one who defend and interpret the rules of procedure, so long as Parliament is concerned, is the Speaker of Parliament. And therefore, we must not be shaking our responsibility. Even as majority lead, minority leader then, the Speaker defended the Constitution. And it was upheld by the then venerable, distinguished Speaker Pitala Ajiti. And therefore, I don't think that what the, the, the new minority are doing is in the right direction. They are wrong, and they must agree that they are wrong. And they should have foresaw this. They should have foresaw it. If they know Bekwai or in the, uh, in the Formina is their stronghold, they should have supported the member of parliament because looking at the sensitive nature of this current parliament. But they themselves were running after Apia Kubi. They were running after Asiyama. They were running after Cynthia Morrison. When you don't have the numbers, make sure you are able to work with everybody, whether you love them or you hate them. You ask for minority, you have gotten it. <laughs> Go and practice it. And thank God, they they are expert in it. Even today, 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 they work out <laughs> as usual of a minority. Thank you, Julia.